Just when I thought I'd left winter behind, we got hit with a big freeze, so Uncle Grumpy and I decided to go chasing frozen waterfalls. Hey, up, lad. I thought we were done with this kind of weather. Pick the best day of the year. <laughs> Uncle requested a pit stop for tea at the dreaded Tim Hortons. Is Tim Hortons? A cup of tea. Can we stop at Starbucks? I don't have very good tea though. So you're telling me Tim Hortons has better tea than Starbucks? Yeah, actually Tim Hortons has pretty good steep tea. But their coffee is undrinkable, swill. Well, so Starbucks though. Yeah, but on a on a scale of swill, <laughs> it's like different I different levels. I don't drink uh, Tim Hortons coffee, so I, you know. You don't drink coffee? Well, I do, but not very often. All right, so, well, we'll go to Star for me, and then we'll go to Hortons for the... Hortons. Yeah. I don't mind eating some Hortons swill. I, I like their disgusting uh, breakfast sandwiches. Do you? Yeah. Right, actually. You what you've already had one today? Oh, I like them, though. Oh, yeah, they're, they're so nasty, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but I like them. I mean, I don't think there's one natural ingredient in the whole sandwich. Oh, no, it's just... Uh, Lips and assholes, and it, and it makes me, it makes me laugh because they had come out with a, a children's uh, meal, I think, and it says all natural ingredients. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell do they put in adult? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Adult why do kids get <laughs> special treatment? Oh, you're a grown-up now. You don't count. <laughs> Well, our first two destinations were a complete bust and we didn't have high expectations for this next stop. The trouble with vlogging is that you have to pack twice as much camera gear and you have to film tedious B-roll like this. Film this! <laughs> Maybe one day we'll be able to afford a proper crew so we don't have to lug around two tripods, but that's not gonna happen unless you like and subscribe. This is our third stop of the day. Each destination has been a complete failure. We figured in this beautiful snow and icy temperatures we'd get something. Uh, it's just, it's kind of patchy, so yeah. it looks kind of ugly. Kind of fuggly. It so, looks beautiful when you look at it from a distance, but... Yeah. But there's this one last spot near Niagara Falls in Goldstream. Let's give it a try. You can always tell the professionals from the amateurs because the amateurs have got all the good gear. <laughs> so when I first came to Vancouver Island on the ferry years and years ago, they were telling me that these these little nooks that you these nooks that you see in the tree is where the, the black bears would traditionally hibernate for the whole winter. But now that we don't get those brutal winters like we used to get, everything's warming up, except for this winter. Um, they just don't hibernate anymore, that they're out all year round. But that's the kind of tree apparently that black bears would look look for for hibernation very educational did you not know yeah, that i didn't ah i got i got gibbs on some <laughs> local knowledge so uh gavin check out this nice new tripod oh, from the uh, colorado tripod company what do you think oh i've definitely got a bit of tripod envy going on right now looks pretty good eh very tasty so i have this new tripod uh by the colorado tripod company i'll put a link down below uh, I just got it, now I'm not going to do a review on it because I want to try it out for a few months before I give my honest opinion, but it looks quite well made. The only thing that I'm not that keen on straight off the bat is that it's a little short because I'm six foot two and a half, uh, but it, it seems to be really well made, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed and I think it's with the head it's around $300 US, which is a hell of a deal for a tripod. So. Go check them out. Um, oh yeah, even for a short guy like me, that's a bit low. Yeah, see, that's that's pretty <coughs> short. But I think it, this one's more for uh, back backpacking, I believe. They're going to make uh, a smaller tripod than this, like a travel one, and then I believe they're going to make a larger one, and hopefully it's uh, a little bit taller for us tall guys. But other than the height issue, it. Um, Seems like a pretty nice tripod. Yeah, the, the carbon fiber feels, it doesn't feel like that cheap crappy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice, I can't wait for mine to arrive. <laughs>
Did you hear that, Colorado Tripod Company? Where the bloody hell is my new tripod? I mean, it's bad enough that Uncle Grumpy won Landscape Photographer of the Year, but with this tripod envy, it's it's just too much. Here we have a perfect specimen of Uncleus Grumpius, which is actually an import from the United Kingdom and is now uh, rife on Vancouver Island. Here it is in its natural habitat, however, taking pictures from afar with a long lens. You can always tell if it's an Uncleus Grumpius by the almost knee-high waterproof boots, the grimace on its face and the presence of a very long lens. The red jacket is to attract uh, suitable mates. Whenever encountering an Uncleus Grumpius, the polite thing to do is to ask, are you getting a good shot, mate? The response is usually in the negative, followed by a grumpy face. However, don't let that fool you because often that signifies that he actually got a killer shot and he's just playing it down so that you don't bother to shoot it. <laughs> Crafty bugger. We were surrounded by beauty but couldn't see the wood for the snowy trees. Now, as landscape photographers we are used to this but I could definitely feel a full-blown photo tantrum brewing. We didn't get what we came for, we didn't get anything that we wanted to get on the first three locations and the day is almost done. I have one final suggestion. So, I think we should head to the water fountain at the parliament building down in Victoria which is like 25 minutes away. Oh, a tourist shot. It's, it, it, it's not too much of a tourist shot because not that many tourists are here every four years in February when we get that two days <laughs> of icy cold snap. So I reckon there won't be that many protographers that get this shot. What else are we going to do? Uh, I guess you're right. You want to do it? Sure. Let's do it. rubbish we come all this way to Victoria because we heard it was even on the news that this had frozen up and when that fro freezes you can get epic shots bloody melted oh stupidity tape as well <laughs> absolute what a crap day I'm having, I'm having a full photo tantrum <laughs> well I don't know about you mate but we've tried plan A B and C what's plan D Pop. For beer o'clock, and I need a pee real bad. Well, after a pathetic mule day with zero pictures taken, the British thing to do is to go for a pint. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this is a landscape photography channel. Where are the photos, Gavin? And I do understand if you feel a bit let down, but before you hit that thumbs down button, just know that in my next video, I'll more than make it up to you. So now that so now that we're not like actual photographers anymore, now we're YouTubers who take pretty <laughs> pictures. How are you finding the whole um, workload, uh, workflow, editing for your videos? Well, I like I, I like the video, but the problem is is that it's been a huge learning curve for me for the editing <coughs> software. Like I'm using Final Cut Pro which is fine. The problem is, is that I, it's taken me ages to learn how to, to, how to use it. And so of course, editing a, a video takes me ages and I'm just doing basic stuff. Yeah. Like I'm not doing anything fancy. So each video, you know, it takes up to a day to, to edit one. A day? Text me five? <laughs> <laughs> oh, who are you? So basically you could be doing 30 videos a month then. <laughs> Yeah, but it should really take only, you know, maybe two or three hours. Oh, there's just, there's just no chance. Five days to do one? It'd take me three hours just to watch the footage. <laughs> That's why I don't take that much footage. <laughs> That's where I'm going wrong. I film too much crap. Well, the, actually the part that takes me the longest is actually editing the photographs. Because I want them to look decent, you know. I like that though. I mean, that's I love that. I love editing but, my pictures. But, but time-wise, it, it takes a long time. You know, if you weren't yeah. doing uh, photographs, then you know. I mean, how long did it take you to edit those, uh, say, those images for your last video with uh, Mount Sheffield and 
and, and all that? Um, each one is about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. What, I, what I've started doing with Premiere Pro is I made, I've made a template document that's got all my standard settings and like the graphics that pop up, a couple of pieces of music that I use, some sound effects, yeah. <clears throat> and all the kind of the standard things that I use in every video, I've set that up now, so it's like a template. Mm. That saves me a bit of time, but because I shoot those 4K clips, oh man, it's painful to, to get your previews going. Well, can't you just edit it in 1080 and then... And then yeah, just that's what I do, I create proxies. But the problem is, you, you drag a two minute video clip at 4K into Premiere, well, you, you can forget trying to do anything with your computer while that's importing and Precisely. creating a proxy. It's, it's unbearable. Yeah. So I need a new computer. And, and, you know, the computer I've got is for photography. I didn't, I didn't start out doing, you know, building a computer for video editing. Yeah. It's really uh, RAM hungry, isn't it? Oh, it's and your hard drive. I think I think the hard drive is pro hard drive and your graphics card. You need those to be. So fast. where are you storing all your video, all your video footage? It's on a, a six terabyte internal SATA drive, which oh. is pretty fast. Well, that's not gonna. That's gonna fill up pretty quick, isn't it? Oh, it's brimmed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get another one. Can you, can you get like an external one just to store your stuff? Well, on? whether it's internal or external, it's going to get filled, filled in it. So it doesn't make any difference. But um, I definitely need to figure out a faster workflow, a good backup thing, a backup system, like a RAID, and something that can, can manage 4K files. Because even though my final videos are only 1080p, I love having a 4K clip that I can zoom in on. Yeah. Like I could shoot a clip of just you and I having a conversation in 4K and then I could even cut to just you talking, to just me talking, even though we're actually originally in the same scene because you've got that much zoom range in a 4K shot if you compose it right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, but I like it.